Every day, about 10 million people take commercial flights to get from point A to point B. Almost 100,000 planes take off and land without a hitch. But from time to time, very rarely, an accident will happen that seems to spike cases of aviophobia all over the world. Like that time when a captain was partially pulled out of the cockpit, dangling in the sky at an altitude of 17,000 feet. As it usually happens, nothing was amiss at first. The captain of the county of South Glamorgan, a mid-sized jet airliner, was 42-year-old Tim Lancaster, with 11,050 flight hours under his belt. His co-pilot was 39-year-old Alastair Stewart Atchison, who had 7,500 flight hours. The plane seemed to be perfectly okay, and the cabin crew was professional and friendly. No one expected the dramatic outcome that was in store for this flight. On June 10, 1990, four crew members and 81 passengers boarded the aircraft. At 8.20 a.m., the co-pilot performed a routine takeoff, and British Airways Flight 5390 left Birmingham, England and headed toward Malaga, Spain. After some time, while the plane was still climbing, Atchison handed the control over to the captain. Everything was going smoothly, and the pilots relaxed in their seats, releasing their shoulder harnesses. Tim Lancaster also loosened his lap belt. 13 minutes later, the plane had already climbed to a height of 17,300 feet and was over Ditcott, Oxfordshire County. Just as the cabin crew was preparing to serve meals, flight attendant Nigel Ogden was entering the cockpit, and there was a loud bang. The passengers were terrified because they thought there was an explosion. However, everything was both better and worse. The real cause of the chaos was the left windscreen panel of the cockpit. It had separated from the fuselage of the plane and was blown away. Later, it was found somewhere in Ditcott. Meanwhile, the cockpit was quickly filling with condensation due to the difference of temperatures outside and inside the cabin. But that wasn't the worst part. Decompression that occurred when the window blew out made the air rush out of the cabin. And as you may remember, the captain had already removed his lap belt. That's why the man was literally ripped out of his seat and sucked out of the missing windscreen. Fortunately, his knees got caught between the seat and the flight controls. His upper body was outside the window, exposed to the incredibly forceful wind and staggering cold. The captain immediately passed out due to the lack of oxygen. Recalling the accident later, one of the passengers told the press that she noticed a man who had been hanging out of the window, and two other men and a woman had been holding onto his legs, trying to prevent him from being sucked out. Little had the passenger known that it had been the captain of the plane. It was the lightning-fast reaction of Nigel Ogden that saved the captain's life. He managed to grab the captain's belt and caught hold of a chair to keep them both steady. After that, another flight attendant, Simon Rogers, darted to the cockpit strapped himself in the pilot's seat and tightly grasped Lancaster's legs. It allowed Ogden to take a break and bandage his hand, which was badly cut when he was trying to pull the captain back into the cockpit. Meanwhile, the passengers thought the plane was on fire and started to panic. The cockpit door was sucked inward and collided with the control console, blocking some parts of it. As a result, the plane began to descend very fast. Debris, passengers' personal belongings, and papers were flying around. People were screaming. Luckily, co-pilot Atchison managed to put on an oxygen mask, inform the passengers about the accident, and ask them to prepare for an emergency landing. But there was a problem. The plane didn't have enough oxygen for everyone on board. That's why the co-pilot was in a hurry to descend to an altitude where the passengers and crew could breathe normally. As he fulfilled this task, he immediately broadcasted a distress call. However, the wind created deafening noise in the cockpit, so Atchison couldn't hear the reply from the air traffic control. Nigel Ogden, who was returning to holding the captain after he tended to his wound, was getting tired. On top of that, he was steadily developing frostbite. That's why Simon Rogers, along with the chief steward John Heward, replaced Ogden to allow the man some rest. The worst thing was that the captain's body had moved a bit further, and his head kept hitting the outside of the plane. But despite their assumption that the man had already lost his life, the crew was still holding onto his body, 
They were still clinging to him even when the plane made the emergency landing at the airport of Southampton. It was 8.55 a.m. local time, just a half an hour after takeoff. The passengers hastily disembarked with the help of boarding steps. Several of them, along with the crew members, were taken to the hospital to be treated for shock, but were released on the same day. Meanwhile, the emergency staff managed to carefully get the captain down and rushed him to the hospital. To everyone's amazement, Lancaster was alive. He had some bad bruising, frostbite, and some fractures in his thumb, wrist, and right elbow, but otherwise, he was unharmed. Naturally, the man was in a state of shock, but he managed to return to work in less than five months and didn't retire from commercial piloting until 2008. But as you can tell, this story could have finished much more tragically if the crew hadn't reacted as urgently as they did. In fact, Tim Lancaster owed his life to his crew members' fast thinking. For such a scary airplane malfunction to result in neither fatalities nor any serious injuries is quite a feat. It's no wonder that sometime later, First Officer Alistair Atchison, as well as cabin crew members Nigel Ogden and Susan Gibbons, were awarded with the Queen's Commendation for Valuable Service in the Air. Besides, in 1992, Atchison also received a Polaris Award for his heroism and impressive skills. But why did the accident happen in the first place? Investigators discovered that 27 hours before the flight, when the windscreen was installed, 84 of the bolts used in the process were too small in diameter, and the rest of the bolts were too short. Interestingly, the window which was replaced with the new one had been installed with the use of incorrect bolts as well. Naturally, the mist-sized bolts couldn't withstand the difference in the air pressure between the outside atmosphere and the cabin. But the accident with British Airways Flight 5390 hasn't been the only accident when a crew member barely escaped being pulled out of the plane. In May 14, 2018, a Sichuan Airlines flight was heading from China to Tibet. When the plane reached the cruising altitude of 32,000 feet, the right windshield suddenly exploded with a deafening bang, and the next thing Captain Liu Xuanzhan knew, his co-pilot was being sucked out of the broken window. Luckily, the man was wearing his seatbelt, which pulled him back into the cockpit. Afterward, it turned out that the co-pilot had only sprained his wrist and received several scratches. But meanwhile, the plane experienced a loss of pressure and temperature drop. The captain couldn't hear the radio, debris was floating in the air, equipment malfunctioned, and the plane was shaking so badly that it was hard to read the gauges. Oxygen masks dropped, and then, all of a sudden, the plane was in a free fall for several seconds. But luckily, it managed to stabilize again. The captain, who was a former military pilot, managed to regain manual control over the Airbus A319, and the plane made an emergency landing at the airport in Chengdu. One more crew member had been injured, but other than that, none of the 119 passengers or other crew members were hurt. By the time of the accident, the plane had accumulated almost 20,000 flight hours since Sichuan Airlines got it in July 2011. The windshield belonged to the original aircraft and hadn't caused any problems before. Wow! Have you ever heard about any other unusual emergency situations that happen mid-flight? Let me know down in the comments! If you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But hey, don't go anywhere just yet! We have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. All you have to do is pick the left or right video, click on it, and enjoy. Stay on the Bright Side of life!